I got an email from the management and they basically asked me if I wanted to go down and audition for them, you know? And a couple of weeks later, you know, I just learned a bunch of songs and uh, went to LA. I flew over to LA and uh, it, it was pretty good because um, I think in the beginning I was stressed that, you know, it was just gonna be like, you only got 10 minutes walk in and everybody's just waiting there with, you know, arm crossed. And, but, it, but it wasn't like that at all. You know, I had, I had my time with the band to just, just me and the band and uh, play you know, a little bit, jam a couple of hours jam a couple of hours and then Ozzy came in and then we jammed all together and it went great, you know. We played, um, I don't know, Bark at the Moon, we played Crazy Train, Suicide Solution, and I think, and I Don't Want to Change the World, I think, yeah. Of course I knew all the songs, you know, but, but I didn't really play them with any cover bands or in my band, I didn't really, you know, so I sat down and practiced, you know, <laughs> did my homework. <laughs> I actually tried to play as close as uh, possible to the original. That's my approach, because I think that's what fans pay money to, to hear, you know, they want to hear the, the songs exactly as they were, you know, the songs they grew up with and the songs they love. And um, as a fan, that's what I would expect if I went to an Aussie concert, no matter who played guitar. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I'm not saying that I'm trying to copy Iomi or Zach or, or Randy or something, you know, obviously I, I play the songs with, with my sound and with my flavor, but, but, you know, I try to stick to the originals as much as possible, you know. I love all eras, man, you know, I, I think every player was very special and, uh, you know, they did their own thing and, you know, I love Zach as, as much as I love Randy or, or Jake, you know. I never really want to go into that debate who was uh, the best, so everybody was, you know, great. And I think everybody offered, uh, you know, a lot in heavy metal and hard rock guitar. And, you know, everybody has played their own classics with Ozzy, you know. So. So it's kind of hard to pick one, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously I'm a huge, I'm a huge Sabbath fan, so you know, if I had to pick one of all the players that was with Ozzy, I, I'm just my is closer to Iommi for some reason, you know? I love Iommi, but I, I love the other guys too. And I do some fills and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> to keep close to the classics, you know, you can't really, what are you going to do, you know? Yeah, obviously you can do like your own, you can put in your little thing in there, you know, but the riff is the riff. I get in the mode at that moment, you know, just like, yeah, I think this is, this is the song now. We're not a fucking cover band, you know, the, the man is right next to me and I'm fucking, yeah, yeah, I have to play it as it is, you know, I can't fuck around with it, you know. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. I thought it was like this. But I saw on some early video of Jake, he was doing like this. So that's there for you. Jake had his own positions, you know. Well, believe it or not, the guy that got me into playing guitar was Peter Frampton, because my dad had this Frampton Comes Alive vinyl at home. When I heard this Do You Feel Like We Do with uh, Talkbox, the guitar sounded like a robot. So I said, I said to my dad, you know, I, I want a guitar, you know, and um, that's how I got started with it. But, you know, growing up, I, I listened to a lot, you know, a lot of other guitar players, you know, I, I listened to everybody from Hendrix and Page to David Gilmour to the Shredders, you know, like Ingve is one of my favorites, you know, had a big impact on me and Paul Gilbert, I love that guy. And, you know, and then, you know, from the classic rocker guys, you know, I would say Shanker and Gary Moore and Uli Roth are, you know, the guys that I really love. And Tony Iommi is also one of my favorites, you know, I, one of the first songs I ever learned was Sweet Leaf, Sabbath, you know, so. And his stuff wasn't really particularly hard to play, so it was easy to adopt to and learn it. And, you know, and uh, later on, as I was growing up, I found out all the small details that he had in his playing. So that was very important, you know, he's a great player, you know. Uh, very detailed, you know, he really makes a difference, I think. He's mainly jamming on the, on, the, on the blues pentatonic scales, but there's so many little things in there that he does that, you know, you really need to pay attention, you know, to kind of like do it, you know. So I love that about Naomi. You know, obviously, Ingvi, 
got us all into studying all this Paganini and all that stuff. You know, I mean, I wasn't really the guy that went like 100% for it, but I thought it would be nice to get a little bit from that side, you know. But I knew if I was going to follow that path, I was just like going to be one of the clones, right? <laughs> so, so you have to be careful with that. I mean, I love Ingve. I love, uh, you know, everything he's done. And uh, he has incredible command of the instrument, you know. And, um, and yeah, of course, you know, I started all these three note per string licks and violin like stuff, you know, he did. Well, the thing is, I never really got into neoclassical. I mean, my music was never really neoclassical style or anything. You know, it's just like I mean, Ingve was an influence as a more of a as a sound and as a techno from a technical point of view and as a sound rather than uh, songwriting wise. You know, I mean, I never really used incorporated any of the uh, any of the neoclassical stuff. You know, because I just didn't want to end up in that kind of. I mean, obviously, I, I love neoclassical. I love what I love what Blackmore did and you know, in, in the early Vinnie Moore records and all that stuff. But I just didn't want to, you know be part of that and, you know, kind of like be so much of a copycat or something, you know, I just try to find my own voice, you know, basically, and yeah, I just took whatever I, I thought it was great from him and, you know, put it in, into my own playing and, you know, there's plenty of that influence for sure, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I worked on a little bit of everything, you know, I just want to also, I practice a lot on, um, Simple stuff like even like vibrato or just the normal blues licks and also, you know, on the speed speaking, speed picking stuff and all that stuff. So, yeah, I was, I, I was trying to be like a well-rounded guitar player. I, I didn't want just to practice solos. I, I practice hard on rhythms, on riffs, on, on chordal stuff, you know, like I try to come up with my own chords and learn, you know, different inversions and stuff like that, you know. That was, you know, major part of my, you know, like my practice routine, so to say, you know. Like I would do a little bit of chords, a little bit of riffs, a little bit of uh, leads, you know, a little bit of improvisation. I would put on a record and just jam over it, you know. Should I say, I mean, you know, just the normal blues licks, you know, everybody practice all this. You know, one very important thing is that when you bend strings, you want to be in tune and, you know, getting a good vibrato. Either this way or the other. You know, so just being able to control, you know, each tone, you know, and uh, each um, each note. Yeah, I mean, I do a lot of that. That's definitely all that English stuff. You know. <laughs> Harmonic minor, you know. And then, you know, I do all these uh, three note per string stuff. Huh? Going up, like. basically playing, you know, learning the scales and each each position, and then kind of like lock it in together, you know. And then you can move around, like. I also do a lot of legato stuff. Usually I do like that, go up like that. That's a cool thing. Kind of like I do like moving up like that. 